I can call a meeting to order if we can all rise to the Pledge of Allegiance. Pledge of Allegiance to the flag of the United States of America and to the republic for which it stands, one nation, under God, indivisible, with liberty and justice for all. Thank you. 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 Here. Councilor Hayes. Here. Councilor Chiazzo. Here. Councilor Here. Here. And if there's any general public comments, this is your time to speak. You have three minutes if you can state your name and address. Good evening, everyone. Benjamin Howard, Seven Winds Pines. I know this is supposed to be a short meeting, but I just wanted to say a couple words. Um, it's about a year ago today that I started attending these council meetings. In fact, I'm sure it'll be exactly a year at the next meeting because I was here for the uh, photo of the first photo of this council. Uh, over this past year, uh, some of the meetings have been fun, others long, and a few boring, but overall, uh, I found it entertaining and a great educational experience. And I'd just like to thank everyone on the council here and everyone that came out and debated whatever topic they stood for for making it such. Um, potentially on Tuesday, if the voters see fit, I could join the council, but if they don't, I, I will still be attending these meetings for as long as I live in Scarborough because I strongly believe in the importance of local government. So again, I'd just like to thank everyone for making this experience so good, and congratulations on another great year. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Is there anybody else I would like to speak? Good evening. Larry Hartwell, 9 Period and Drive. Uh, we have a new sign ordinance in town. And as I mentioned, I think the week after it went up, and I attended four public hearings prior to that, two of which I was against it, and then the last two I was for it. Um, as I said at that time, or a week after the ordinance went in place, 100% of the signs in town are, are not complying with the, with the ordinance. Um, several of us from Smart Taxes have been photographing and sending them in for review. Um, it's been suggested that there's maybe some bias here. There's hundreds of signs out there. We've, we've sent in political ones. We've sent in business ones. Um, I'm hope, um, and tonight, uh, in front of Walgreens, which is a right turn only lane, we still have two school board signs there. Uh, I don't see anywhere in the, in the ordinance where they have a, a free pass, but that's the way it goes. Um, hopefully, we can revisit this after the election. Um, and, and simplify it. Uh, the three camp counselors who are, are running for re-election and a former one, initially when their signs were put up, all four of them had some sort of violation with the ordinance as it was written. Most of them have been, been uh, uh, fixed since then, but it just shows the complexity of it, the difficulty in complying. And our businesses, you know, they work hard. They're trying to rate, you know, they want to pay taxes, be good citizens, and we're after them because they've got two, two uh, flags up instead of one. Or they're trying to uh, have a special sale, or they're trying to hire people, and we say, oh, you can only have one sign, or you can have two signs, but they're too close together. I think we could simplify it and still, uh, still get to a reasonable point. Thank you. Is there anyone else I'd like to speak? Not seeing any, we'll close the public comment. Is there a uh, motion to accept the minutes of October 18, 2017 from Council? So moved. Second. Okay. Any edits, corrections for the town clerk? Not seeing any. All those in favor? That is unanimous. Thank you. Um, there are no adjustments to the agenda. Um, I have already signed the treasurer's warrants. Moving into the first item of order, which is order number 17-106. It's a 7 p.m. public hearing and second reading on the request to amend the town ordinances as noted below to de gender neutral content due to the number of pages in this order and a tested copy of the proposed changes are on file in the town clerk's office for review. And this has been recommended by the ordinance committee. Is there an executive overview from the chairman of the ordinance committee? Yes. Uh, uh, we. Uh uh, have a gender neutralization uh, review done by the assistant town manager. Did a very good job on this. Uh, planning board hearing was held. They definitely support uh, the uh, effort to make it all gender neutral. There were some suggestions, uh, which I'm not sure that uh, 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 
uh, we were going to take up, but uh, but uh, they were generally uh, unanimously in favor of it. Excellent. Are there any comments from public? Uh, it's public hearing. Is there any comments from the public? <coughs> Not seeing any, we'll close the public hearing. Is there a motion from council? So moved. Second. Any comments or questions from council? Not seeing any. Um, all those in favor? And that is unanimous. Thank you. <coughs> Order number 17-107 is a 7 p.m. public hearing and second reading on the proposed amendment to Chapter 604A. The Town of Scarborough Horse Permit, Horse Beach Permit Ordinance, Section 604A, Regulation of Horses on the Beach, to extend the deadline for the implementation of the containment device for horses on the beach to October 1st, 2018 as requested by Councillor Donovan. Would the Council like to give an executive overview? Yes, yeah, certainly. Uh, this is an ordinance that we have passed. Uh, given the uh, uh, urging of the horse riding community to uh, delay its implementation until uh, October 1st, this is an off-season program, so it would be uh, extending it for a year so as to allow them to purchase the necessary equipment, train the horses, uh, uh, we, as an ordinance committee, unanimously endorsed that uh, proposal and are proposing now that it be October 1st, 2018. Thank you. Is um, open up to public hearing. Is there any comments? Not seeing any. We'll close the public hearing. And is there a motion from council? So moved. Okay. Jacob has been seconded by Peter. Um, any comments or questions from council? Uh, we will hold an ordinance committee meeting tomorrow. We're going to talk uh, about how this year, uh, between now and April, when uh, uh, it is uh, ended for the year, uh, uh, how that might be able to be done in a way to be able to keep the beach clean uh, uh, and uh, use it as sort of a pilot program. Mm -hmm. Councillor St. Clair. Um, do we have a response yet from Old Orchard? as to how they're going to proceed if we move forward with this? I'm not sure. I can follow up with the town manager. Yeah, I, I wasn't sure if uh, Tony, you followed up with the clerk? I did at the time. They um, killed it. They, I thought they had I thought it's already been disposed of over there. They, they so killed it. I was just I wondering. Yeah, I got two different versions. I heard that it was tabled, and then I heard it was killed. The person who said it was tabled, I found more reliable than the people telling me that it was killed. So I will verify it. I'm quite certain it was defeated. Yeah. Okay. So that requirement is not uh, part of their regulations at this point. Okay. I will say, um, for the record, I I think it's um, I'm disappointed in the council in Old Orchard. Um, I think professionally it would have been a much more um, professional route to take, I'm trying to be very careful with my words, um, to table that and contact us whereas we are in an agreement with them mm -hmm. and went into that agreement with them, I believe on the urging of Old Orchard. So um, that's why I find this frustrating and the fact that Old Orchard was the one that had a bun bag in place and because of us they dropped it. So f to see this swift change with no notice to us, um, I found to be um, un extremely unprofessional um, and I'm disappointed. So I would hope that um, with over the, over the next year, this council can um, work with them and come up with a solution. <coughs> Otherwise, um, we, our, our riders won't be able to um, coexist with Old Orchard. Any other comments? Not seeing any. All those in favor? And that is unanimous. Thank you. Um, there is no old business at this time. There is also no new business. Um, non action items, so we do not have any. A standing and special committee reports and liaison reports. I'll start with Councillor Donovan. Yeah, uh, nothing to report other than that the uh, Ordinance Committee will be meeting tomorrow at 4 45. Uh, we're going to be discussing uh, uh, beach passes for out of town permit holders, uh, as well as this uh, uh, ideas, no action intended, but ideas that might improve the way in which uh, the beach can remain clean for this year. Thank you. Um, Councilor Chiazzo. Um, so um, 
just looking real here real quick. We did have a uh, transportation committee meeting. Um, we talked about the uh, public comment sections around uh, East Grand Avenue, about the changes to, to the layout of that street and the result of the public hearing. We kind of narrowed it down to uh, two options, I think, that we're going to present for more formal presentation to the public. And we also looked at the rotary uh, layout, or the, I shouldn't say the rotary because it's not a rotary, the intersection at the end of Pine Point Road and East Grand Ave. Right now it's kind of a, a very unique interchange. Um, we explored the option of uh, making that a four-way, more traditional four-way intersection. Uh, and that, that will be moved ahead for consideration as well. And finally, we did a quick kind of cursory review of Gorham Road um, to look at um, whether passing lanes would be necessary, unturned lanes would be necessary, and we did a very preliminary overview of that as well. So all of those recommendations will be put before the council before any other major decisions are happening. Thank you. Uh, Councilor Rowan? Thank you. Uh, Scarborough Housing Alliance met. Um, the majority of the time was spent discussing um, what we're going to put in the RFP that is going to be released in the spring. Thank you. Councilor Hayes? Yeah, two quick things to report. One, the Finance Committee did meet and we did re review the financial statements of, as of 9.30 and we're on track, so no surprises. Um, actually, what was shared with us, we will be sharing at a later date or maybe some, some positive news, so we'll elaborate on that as, as time progresses forward. Um, the second thing that I'd like to call everybody's attention to is the, the Department of Marine Resources. Actually, there was a hearing, a public hearing, and several of the councils were there. I know Councilor Donovan was there. I think Council Chiazzo was there. About a proposal for three oyster farms in the rivers, one down in Spurwick and, and, and others kind of up from the, the co-op. It was a really fascinating uh, presentation. It's a new concept, so there's some information out there, but for those that are listening from home, Really encourage you to find out more about it and take a look. If you have any comments or concerns, let the folks know. But it, it was an interesting concept. Thank you very much. Um, Councillor Foley. None. Councillor St. Clair. Um, the only thing I have to say is um, communications committee, the only feedback we've gotten from our strategic plan was from Tom. So um, my guess is that um, I'm not sure that I will be here moving forward. So um, I would hope that you could get those back to me before um, the, within the next few weeks if you plan on it. If not, um, then I would appreciate it if you could at least get them back to um, Councillor Foley or Councillor Hayes because um, we did work really hard on it. So, um, And your feedback is really critical to making it work. So thank you. Council, if I could just ask a follow-up through the chair. Kate, uh, were those on? Are they on SharePoint yet? Yeah, mm -hmm. They have, okay. I looked and I didn't see them before, but I've got handwritten comments, but I'll, mm -hmm. I'll put up a SharePoint. Yep. Thank you. Sorry. Nope, no worries. No worries. Um, and I have nothing as chair. Moving into okay. the town manager's report. Yes, uh, quickly, just came to mind with Council Rowan's report uh, regarding the Housing Alliance and the uh, in-lieu fees. Just found out today that Gateway Commons, this is the large multifamily luxury apartment uh, project, is actually moving quicker than we anticipated. Uh, they've actually applied for building permits for all but two buildings. So the majority of the project, they're applying for, for permits. You may recall in the contract zone approval, it requires payment upon uh, at the time of issuance of building permits. So it looks as though we'll be front-loading a lot of those uh, in lieu fees. I don't think it really changes our schedule, uh, but things are moving quicker than was in originally anticipated. Um, I did, and I think Councillor Hayes alluded to this, I will mention it because it could be on your agenda as soon as November 15th. Uh, we did receive word from our financial advisor that there is the potential to do some advanced refunding of, uh, I think it's 2010, 2013, and 2014, or there's three series of bonds that uh, have some potential for advanced refunding. Uh, his analysis shows uh, present value savings, depending on the option you take, something in the order of $600,000. So it, it looks as though it's very attractive for us to consider. Uh, his strong recommendation is we hit the market while the rates are where they are. And so we'd be looking at doing that bond issue probably in the month of January, which, backing that up, uh, we would start as soon as your next council meeting. T um, as part of that, we may want to bring in the annual CIP borrowing as well, so we do it all in one, one piece. So I, I mentioned that. It's a bit of a fluid situation, but it does look as though there's some fairly significant opportunities that we ought to take advantage of. 
Um, also, I think you all received an invitation that Scarborough High School is going through an accreditation pro uh, process, which is a really big deal for them. Uh, there's a 16-member visitation team that's coming starting this Sunday, November 5th, mm -hmm. and they'll be here um, through most of next week, I believe. And it's a very thorough audit, kind of top to bottom. Um, what they would like our involvement with is kind of an opening presentation, and I think there'll be the opportunity for interview or at least conversation with these members. And uh, if you didn't see that, I can resend it to you. Um, I think it came from... Principal Creech last okay. week, perhaps. Um, I'll, I'll send it. it out again just so you see it. I got it. Okay. Uh, but I know for them it's a really big deal, and they'd love our participation if possible. Uh, lastly, uh, the council has been aware there's been a number of sewer complaints, odor complaints. I, I shouldn't necessarily attribute them to sewer, but odor complaints. Um, we've been in direct coordination and communication with the Sanitary District, who for quite some time, well over a year perhaps, uh, are aware of some of these issues and are working toward uh, solving them. Uh, I know Councillor Hayes has received uh, a fair amount of um, complaint or commentary around this, and uh, a number of residents did appear, I think, at the last trustees meeting, which mm -hmm. is a, a great place for them to be and mm -hmm. to voice their concern. Um, so we're certainly hopeful that they're working toward a, a good resolution in that regard. Uh, and I'll save the uh, request to get people out to vote to someone else um, in your closing <laughs> comments. <laughs> Thank you. Um, Council com member comments, Council St. Clair. Oh. <laughs> Jeez, Sean. Gonna have uh, something I know. Uh, nice. Okay. Um, one thing I wanted to mention was I got um, an email. Um, this is more of a generalized comment, not necessarily directed at the Council, but um, for those of us that have kids in the school system and for people um, out in the audience, uh, if you have kids in the high school, middle school, primary schools, um, there's been, the email was centered around bullying. Um, and this mother was extremely upset about some bullying that she was saying that was taking place at um, the middle school. Um, and. I think I'm not going to get into details because it's not my place. I guess what I really just want to do is remind us to, help, to model our behavior for our kids. Um, nothing drives me more crazy than I, when I hear or have a conversation with a parent who says, oh, my kid doesn't know that because, you know, and I'm thinking, and I, your kids know everything. They hear everything. Um, if you think they don't know it, they do know it. And if you ask them, they know it better than you. Um, so I would just, I really encourage parents to have conversations with their kids. Um, ask their kids about what's happening at school, not just academically, but socially. How are your friends? What is your situation? How, how do you view other things? And then also, um, the one thing that I've been really trying to do with, especially my sixth grader this year, is encourage him an almost role play scenario, what do you do if you see a situation where someone's being bullied? Because that, what I'm finding, is the most intimidating thing. My son almost would rather be bullied than have to get in between a situation where someone's being bullied and there's a bullier um, because it creates more conflict and he gets very, that makes him more nervous. So I guess, well, I know this is the council, not the school board. Um, it just really bothered me. And then after talking to him and hearing some of the stories that he was telling me, um, you know, sadly, social media is a wonderful thing, but it's also a horrible thing for some of our kids. Um, and pictures and comments can fly like wildfire. And it's, it's deplorable what some of the things that I've seen that he's shown me, that, I'm, that it's coming from from sixth graders, and these are 11 and 12 year olds. So um, I guess I just really want to make sure that people are having those conversations with their kids and don't ever think that your kid is above it or may not be being influenced by it because I can pretty much guarantee you that every child has some way been affected by it at some point. Um, and either, either way, you should be involved in it. So just something that happened this past week and, I, and I, I wanted to have the conversation about it and I wanted to make sure that I got it in before the end of the um, council session. But um, that's it for me. Thank you. Uh, Councillor Foley. 
Um, yeah, just the only thing I have to say is just uh, I wanted to thank the police department, the fire department, CMP, mm -hmm. um, Public Works, everybody who's just been working around the clock um, during this latest storm. Um, I am one of those who are still out of power and likely to still be out of power until Saturday is what I'm now being told. So, um, and, and not just those who do it because it's part of their job, but also the neighbors that I've seen out helping neighbors. Mm -hmm. Like that, I, I do think that sometimes at a time of crisis is when we're at our best and you see people really coming together, working together, uh, and that's the kind of community that I'd love to see. So. Um, I also want to just say, as bad as it's been for us, I think for me it was a little bit of uh, humble pie or humility or acknowledgement of understanding how much worse uh, the folks down south and in the islands uh, had it during their storms. I, if I could survive one night of terror, I can imagine some of them who had to go through many nights of it. So um, anyway, thanks to everybody, and we're, we're going to get through it. We're almost there. Thank you. Uh, Councilor Hayes. Yeah, a little, little different you know, direction or something. I'd just like to share something. About a week and a half ago, I was fortunate enough, I rode along in a police cruiser for about eight hours on Friday night with Officer Mike Thoreau. And boy, I tell you, what a great experience that was, really trying to understand. I, I was really, it was an eye-opener. So I would encourage all counselors to, they're very open to have you go along. But it was an interesting experience. I got a much better appreciation of what our professional, you know, public safety people deal with. We went from, we found there was a woman that was up in, a, in a trench on the side of the road, a pretty remote area. Um, no one knows how she got there. They suspect she was, she was put out of a car. That was an eye opener. There was a seven year old girl that was threatening harm to her family. Um, and this all happened in one night. There was a pretty serious accident down in front of Flaherty Farms where someone T-boned another and hit a pole that took out a guide wire. And I was really impressed at how quickly sort of some of the volunteers and others that show up to direct traffic got there. Um, there were a couple situations where they ended up having to transport um, residents to different hospitals. And when that happens, the one in one instance, they had a transport in the cruiser. There are only three officers on. Mm -hmm. They transported a patient to Saco. That officer was off the screens for service here for about three hours. So it really, really made me realize how thinly our officers are spread. There was one situation where a burglar went off down on Prout's Neck and the officer went down. It was pitch black. There was nobody there. And he got out of the cruiser and he kind of said, geez, if anything happens, just call me on the radio. <laughs> 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 That's not what I bargained for. Um, I always have appreciation. I always thought it would be a real hoot and a real sort of rush when they put the blue lights on and go fast. Mm. Till I realized that a lot of people just don't pull over mm -hmm. and they stay in their lane and the officer then would go and play chicken in the other lane. Mm -hmm. That wasn't, that was, I was like, okay, I'm done. I haven't been, <laughs> but tremendous professionalism and would really give you a much better sense of what our, our folks on the front lines are dealing with. So just want to say thanks to the police department and Officer Thoreau, who was very professional. He answered my thousand and more questions. Um, so anyway, I just wanted to give a shout out and recommend that everybody should do it. It's a great, great experience. Excellent. Councilor Rowan. Yeah, thank you. I'll, I'll take uh, Tom up on encouraging everyone to vote between now and uh, Tuesday. I think tomorrow's the last day of absentee with no, um, no reason. Uh, but otherwise, Tuesday at the, at the high school. Um, so, um, and I would encourage everyone to um, learn more about the Public Safety Building. Um, and I encourage you to go to scarboroughmain.org. Um, forward slash PSB, um, and uh, there's some videos there and some more information about the pu new public safety police. Thank you. Council Donovan? Well, we got the power back yesterday, uh, which was great. <laughs> I did develop a bad case of gener generator envy. Mm. When you think you're around home. the neighborhood. <laughs> that, uh, uh, here, I'm going to pass out uh, the uh, Echo Main annual report. Uh, it's a good read, actually. Uh, for those who aren't familiar with Echo Maine, it's owned by 22 communities uh, in the greater Portland area and acts as our trash uh, disposal company. They burn it uh, uh, and it becomes ash. They also are moving uh, composted material up to uh, Exeter Agra Energy uh, up north uh, and we have on page five a nice picture of our own Kerry Grantham. Uh, so that I thought was great. 
uh, and uh, that's, uh, that's a terrific uh, uh, organization that we're associated with. Uh, I attended the scoping session with, uh, with Peter and Chris. It was a really interesting process. The applicants were Matt Hasler, Hasler and Robert Willette. Uh, and they're talking about suspended culture techniques uh, uh, where the, they kind of have this netting that uh, uh, keeps the uh, oysters in for two or three years and then they start to be able to harvest it. So it's a lengthy process. Uh, the uh, shellfish community was out in numbers, very interested in this and it's a new, it's a new business uh, and it's an exciting business. and. Wishing them uh, best of luck with it. Um, I was very pleased with the way the sign ordinance uh, uh, worked. First year out, you're always going to have a few, you know, but people learn quickly. But what really was nice was going by the marsh areas, mm. and they were just pristine. I just really enjoyed that. And, uh, the major intersections of town were less congested. It really was a huge plus. I was I was absolutely delighted. And it was some nice, uh, nice effort on the part of several people uh, in the community. I think uh, uh, Mrs. O'Brien particularly was helpful in identifying. And thank you uh, to that effort. Uh, and lastly, uh, so uh, the uh, uh, Scarborough High School Girls Soccer Class A South Championship tonight out on the field. And mm -hmm. when I went by earlier, they were up one to nothing. Yeah. Nice. So good luck to you. Thank you. Councilor Chiazzo? Um, so I had a, uh, uh, this being our last meeting, I was going to have some, some wonderful words of wisdom and, and condolences and, and happiness and reflection, um, but I'm going to scrap all that. Uh, <laughs> <laughs> no, uh, obviously, um, I, I still have those feelings, of course, but I did really, really want to focus on um, what's been going on in town with the weather. Um, it really is kind of historic and unprecedented. and. Um, you know, it's it's really been a Herculean effort to uh, across the board for town, state, and and utilities to try and keep things running along. Um, I did want to mention for those people who still do not have power that uh, in Scarborough there are two warming and charging stations. Uh, Wentworth School is open until 8 p.m. for warming and charging, and the public library is open. Um, uh, tonight and tomorrow night until 8 p.m. and I don't know if they're going to do extended hours, but they're open Friday until from 10 a.m. to 5 p.m. Uh, and then Saturday again for those who still are without power on Saturday from 1 to 5. I don't know if those hours will change, but that's their standard hours. Um, a couple quick tips I, I wanted to throw out. I thought it was important. Um, food safety is kind of important. We don't necessarily think about that when, when these things happen. Anything that's been left out of the refrigerator or been above 40 degrees for more than two hours, it's really no good, throw it out. It's not worth the risk. Um, and then the freezer, kind of the similar approach, anything that doesn't still have ice on it or is still cold to touch like it's been in a fridge, if it's been warm for more than two hours above 40 degrees, throw it out. Generator safety, it kind of goes without saying. You know, uh, luckily, I, I haven't heard any reports of any fatalities or anything, um, but I think that's a, a lot of common sense. Don't use it inside, don't use it in a garage. Make sure, even if your windows and doors are open and fans are running, make sure it's away from the house and well ventilated. Um, and then finally, um, check on your neighbors. Uh, we, we do have a lot of elderly in town and they're not necessarily out and about, but you know, if you, if you recognize a couple houses that don't have power and you remember who's in there, please you know, maybe give them a knock and make sure everything's okay. Um, I, I did want to comment on, I, I have noticed the civility in town seems to be a little bit higher, which I very much appreciate. Uh, I commute to Saco now every day and the lights were out on Route 1 and I think traffic flowed better, and this is not a knock, but I think traffic flowed better without the lights because people were actually considerate and were slowing down and allowing people to, to merge properly and it wasn't a mad rush to the next yep. green light. Um, so I, I appreciate that. Uh, I also happened to be at a, at a local restaurant on Route 1 that was the only one that had power. It was absolutely slammed and there were two people uh, uh, who were serving. Everybody was in great spirits. Staff was stressed out, but everybody was relaxed, complimentary, pleasant. You know, nobody was complaining. Everybody was helping each other out. So I, I very much appreciate that, and it's, it, it is. I, I agree with Councillor Foley. It's some, you know, when things get tough, and we, that's really kind of where our community starts to shine. So um, I'll just say, uh, and all the info that I gave you, by the way, is 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 on the. Um, main emergency management agency section of the main.gov website. Even if you don't have power, you can get it through your phone. So the info is up there and running. 
Or 2-1-1 is a good resource as well. Yep, 2 one is a good one. So um, I will just end with um, uh, please be safe, be kind to each other, be supportive of others, and please remember to vote on Tuesday. Thank you. Thank you. Uh, what a great way to end uh, with all the great stories. I do want to uh, mention, um, so I, I had some prepared um, comments regarding signs and particularly about stolen signs because I had that experience this week in which I filed a report with the police department. But what I want to remind people is 20 years ago tonight, Hurricane Ruth mm. hit Scarborough. Didn't have quite as the impact as whatever hit us this past week, but it's kind of weird that it's exactly yeah. 20 years and that we had it. And I happen to be at the Black Point Inn, so I want to say thank you to the counselors uh, for allowing me to have a very short agenda because it is my 20th wedding anniversary. Mm -hmm. And I did want to provide a public notice that um, we are having an event over at O'Reilly's Cure in which several counselors are going to be there. So we're going to have more than three. My wife is bringing rulers to slap anyone who thinks that they're going to talk about <laughs> politics. Um, but uh, with that, I would like to uh, make a motion to adjourn. So moved. Second. All in favor? Thank you.